Hello and welcome to the Amyloidosis Forum Scientific Workshop. I'm Isabel Lusada, the CEO and founder of the Amyloidosis Research Consortium. The forum is a result of a public-private partnership formed in 2019 between the Amyloidosis Research Consortium and the FDA. The overarching goal of the forum is to leverage expertise and resources from all stakeholders to advance rigorous science and to bridge the gaps in drug discovery and development in AL amyloidosis. In 2019, the forum prioritized areas of focus during our public meeting in November. One of the topics we aim to discuss is endpoint development and that's the focus of today's meeting, which is part of a series. Next slide, please. We would really gratefully like to acknowledge the contribution of all the working group members who've put a huge amount of effort and time into this um, work stream. The NIH for supporting this meeting. On behalf of the forum, I'd like to give special thanks to Takeda for giving us their tourmaline data and Janssen for their willingness to test endpoints through the Andromeda study. This sets an important standard for the amyloidosis community to adhere to. Next slide, please. Light chain AL amyloidosis is a rare, progressive and fatal disease affecting an estimated eight to 12 people per million annually. It's caused by misfolded light chains produced by a small dangerous B clone cell. AL is characterized by the accumulation of abnormal misfolded protein, amyloid, in various tissues and organs that produce patient-specific clinical manifestations depending on the organ impacted. Progressive amyloid deposition and proteotoxic effects of the amyloid protein lead to organ failure, which is especially catastrophic when the heart is affected and is the primary cause of death. Further complicating this disease is its heterogeneity, which is well described in this slide and shows the predominant organs involved and also the wide variety of symptoms. General symptoms for most patients include fatigue, weakness, anxiety, sleep disturbances, and it massively impacts their daily activities, social functioning and emotional well-being. We'll hear more about the different organ groups as we move, different organs as we move forwards. Next slide, please. There is a significant unmet need for therapies. And as was eloquently described by Dr. Wachileka in our previous meeting, this is a tale of two diseases. Current treatments, including the recently and first approval last week of Darzilex, are aimed at targeting the clone and reducing the amyloid light chains. Additionally, novel approaches are targeting the amyloid deposition. Future approaches may be aimed at modulating light chain aggregation and proteotoxicity. Innovation and collaboration is required to address this complex disease. And I'd like to hand over now to our FDA public-private partnership liaison, Dr. Dunman. Uh, thank you very much, Isabel. Uh, and uh, I assume everyone can hear me now, so I'm going to proceed forward. Um, uh, I'd like to thank you and welcome you all to today's scientific workshop. It is a pleasure to be back again as the liaison from FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research to consider novel endpoint development for AL amyloidosis clinical trials. This should prove to be a very interesting and engaging discussion, but before beginning, I do need to remind everybody of several things about um, CEDAR participation, uh, beginning with my disclaimer. Next slide. Can we advance the slide, please? There we go. Um, that the findings of, of um, this presentation, uh, the conclusions of this presentation have not been formally disseminated by the Food and Drug Administration and should not be construed to represent any agency determination or policy. The mention of commercial products, their sources, or their use in connection with material reported herein is not to be construed as either an actual or implied endorsement of such products 
by the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, next slide, please. Keep in mind that the purpose of our public-private partnership with the Amyloidosis Research Consortium is to leverage expertise and resources for the conduct of mutually beneficial scientific activities in the pre-competitive domain. And its aim is to bridge scientific gaps in drug discovery and development. Finally, project results generated by public-private partnerships are made broadly available to the public for the benefit of public health. Next slide, please. Specifically, CEDAR participation is limited to providing a general perspective on regulatory standards, scientific issues, and scientific gaps related to pre-competitive drug development. This precludes us from commenting on any specific regulatory application, product, or other non-public information. Providing specific opinions on the quality and quantity of scientific evidence for regulatory decision-making. Providing opinions on what conclusions an official regulatory review might reach based on the scientific evidence. Uh, providing recommendations or comments on submissions intended for the FDA review teams. Or giving advice on a specific proprietary drug development program. Next slide, please. So to the business at hand, what you see here is a summary graphic of the workflows that have commenced within this public-private partnership with the participation of international leaders in academia and industry, as well as regulatory staff from FDA and the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency in the UK. Most recently in October of last year, meeting one on this slide to your left was held virtually to discuss analytical possibilities for improving detection of efficacy from small data sets in rare diseases like AL amyloidosis. From that meeting, medical statistical, regulatory, and patient reported outcomes experts met as working subgroups to define the most clinically meaningful and potentially measurable results and outcomes regarding hematology, cardiology, nephrology, gastroenterology, neurology, and quality of life outcomes. So today we reconvene for what on this slide is meeting two in the center to consider novel endpoint component possibilities from each of the working subgroups, as well as potential analytical tools and mechanisms that might combine these measures in a way to maximize the power of a clinical trial to demonstrate efficacy in small populations. Next slide, please. So now I'm pleased to turn this meeting over to our moderator for today, the board chair of the Amyloidosis Research Consortium, Dr. Sarah Karen Smith. Dr. Karen Smith earned her PhD in biochemistry from the Imperial Cancer Research Fund in London following which she completed her postdoctoral research at the Center for Neurobiology at Columbia University. She served as the senior partner um, and managing director of the Boston Consulting Group until 2018, following which she became a Harvard Advanced Leadership Fellow and has since worked with a number of innovation-related areas in the private, social, and public sectors with a strong focus on novel, novel drug and vaccine research and development. So a warm welcome to you, Dr. Karen Smith. Uh, Dr. Karen Smith, there you go, I think you were muted. Ah, okay, thank you very much indeed, Dr. Dunman. Um, let me start by sharing an overview of today's events. Um, maybe we can advance the slides. So we're going to start and end today with the martial art of statistics. Initially, um, some statistical context, and then a much more in-depth discussion at the end of the day, debating alternate frameworks for looking across the endpoints that we're going to discuss. 
between these two statistical bookends will be a series of readouts from our working groups. These are a result of extensive work on behalf of um, cross-functional teams to come up with um, what they view as the best candidates and the prioritist candidates for endpoints in their areas. Um, if we take the next slide. So our, each group will present and we'll then have time for Q&A. And I would ask um, you, as you think about the Q&A, to think about a question which is, you know, are you fundamentally in agreement with the prioritization as stated or are there real things that you want to um, address? Um, and just flag whether this is a sort of fundamental question or whether it's more of a, a you know, a, a request for clarification on a specific point. That will just help us understand the degree to which um, we have to kind of go into things in more depth. I think this is a great point to acknowledge not only the work that's been done to date, but I give a huge thanks to the patient representatives who've been in each of these working groups. These have been highly technical groups and our patient representatives have slogged through with us in these groups. And so a huge thanks to, to them. Um, and in acknowledgement of that, what I'd like to do as we go through each of these working groups is start with um, a little introduction from each of the uh, patients that were on the teams. Um, before this, a little housekeeping, the goal uh, see so if we can advance the slides. The goal here is for this to be a working style meeting. Please, you know, engage, put things um, in the Q&A tool as you want to ask questions. We've asked one of the members of each of the working group to just be analyzing the Q&A tool. They may be able to answer questions directly in that tool, or we may be able to um, advance uh, uh, someone to the to the audience, from the audience to the panel to ask their question. And so if you are flagged to ask a question, we ask that you switch on your camera. I think we will run out of time. <laughs> so we uh, commit to answering any other questions that we don't get to in the next few weeks. We have a break plan from 1.20 to 1.50 Eastern Standard Time. So that's our, our current goal is to get to that break on time if we can. Um, if we can advance the slide. Can we have the next slide? Thank you. So let's start with our first session. Um, I am going delighted to introduce James Signorovich. He's a partner at the Analysis Group, which is a global analytics consultancy. He's the co-founder of the Duchenne Trajectory Analysis Project, which is a research consortium that lays the scientific groundwork for improved drug development in that field. James has supported numerous regulatory submissions in rare diseases and holds a PhD in biostats from Harvard. James, take it away. Thank you, Sarah. So as Sarah mentioned, we have two goals in this workshop. One is to advance a broad set of endpoints across organ systems, which drug developers and, and regulators can draw on uh, really for a wide array of treatments and clinical trials in AL amyloidosis. I wanna take a moment here before we discuss uh, each specific organ system uh, to tee up a second goal, which is to advance a multi-domain composite endpoint for AL amyloidosis. Uh, now, composite endpoints are hard, uh, especially when they aim to encompass multiple organ systems into a single endpoint. Uh, but we think it's essential to explore the possibility of composites in AL amyloidosis particularly for trials of plasma cell directed therapies. Next slide, please. So in particular, precisely because AL is a heterogeneous and multi-system disease, a multi-system endpoint might better measure the effects of a treatment that truly targets the root causes of the disease. And because AL is rare and progressive, the better our measure of treatment efficacy uh, the better we could evaluate new drugs rigorously and with achievable sample sizes while limiting the amount of progression and mortality uh, that has to occur during clinical trials. Now, those are the intended benefits of developing a multi-domain composite for AL. Um, we don't expect that they'll come easily. 
Uh, there are important challenges uh, whenever developing a composite endpoint and especially developing one across multiple domains. Uh, and th those challenges are gonna be the focus uh, of, the, of the final session today. So next slide, please. So to plant some seeds for the upcoming discussion of composites, we wanted to lay out the key types of composite outcomes that we've been considering. Um, these were all discussed at the last workshop, uh, and they include some endpoints that are, are traditional in general, so responder criteria, uh, for example, and time to event composites. Um, these are familiar in general and widely used, um, but still require significant care to extend into measures that span multiple organ systems. Uh, there's excellent precedent for this in, in AL, AL. Uh, most notably the Andromeda trials secondary endpoint, uh, which is survival free of major organ deterioration uh, or MOD PFS, is a composite outcome, which is of course being monitored uh, following the successful accelerated approval based on, on hematology outcomes. Uh, at the last workshop, we also heard uh, from Dr. Kakis on multi-domain responder endpoints, which have uh, found use in, in lysosomal storage disorders and other rare diseases, uh, and about the uh, benefits of those endpoints in particular, that they're sensitive to both improvement and worsening across, uh, across multiple organ domains. We also heard from Dr. Sfinkelstein and Schoenfeld on the hierarchical composite endpoint that they pioneered uh, and which was very successfully used to combine survival uh, and hospitalization outcomes in the ATTRACT trial uh, in TTR amyloid cardiomyopathy. Um, so overall, in, in the amyloid space, there are excellent precedents that we can build on uh, as we seek to uh, develop composites for AL amyloidosis. Um, so please do keep these different types of endpoints in mind during today's uh, organ-specific discussions. Um, after hearing the recommendations from each of the working groups, we will uh, turn to this question of which of these types of composite endpoints merit further development and validation in AL amyloidosis, uh, and what organ-specific measures should be included in these composites. So thank you, and with that, I'll turn it back to, uh, to Sarah. Oh. Sorry, am I unmuted? Great, thank you, 